He says, I'm, I'm going to figure out a way so that I can restore their righteousness. Because us becoming a mutt was becoming sinful. And because we became sinful, we could not stand in the presence of God. We had to be separated from God. Because anything unrighteous can't be in God's presence. You will burn up in his presence. But God loved his people so much that he tried to make, he made a system in a way that we can be reconciled to him. Now when we read back in Leviticus, we look at the old system that God did. God built the tabernacle. He says, you know, I need to build a tabernacle. I, I, I need to build a place that I can come meet with my people. Because God could have destroyed us. He's God like that. He could have just said, you know, forget them. They're disobedient. They ain't going to listen to me. They ain't going to do nothing I say do. The very thing I created to be in my image now took on the image of my enemy. Think about that. The very thing God formed and fashioned and created to be in his image, to be in his likeness, to talk like him, to walk like him, to worship him, to be like him, took on the form of the one he kicked out of heaven because of our sinful nature. He could have just as easily said, man, forget about it. I ain't put no in the boat. I ain't put nobody in the boat. Everybody dying in the flood. <laughs> Come on now. He's God like that. He could have done that. But the fact of the matter is God so loved us that he says, I need to make a way for me to be reconciled back to my people that I so love. Because when God put Adam in the boat, he didn't just see, when he put Noah in the boat, he didn't just see Noah, he saw you. He saw you. He saw you. He saw mankind. It says, I love them so much that I have to put away and make a way to save them. Now, Leviticus, we look at the old system. The old system was such as this. All the sins that you had committed, all the sins that you have done throughout the year, you had one time. To offer up your sins to God for one year. The system was, was that you had to bring a lamb. Right? You had to slaughter the lamb to get to the blood. That's the reason why when Jesus says, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. The body had to be broken to get to the blood. And we're going to talk about the blood in just a minute. But that was the whole purpose for the lamb being slaughtered was to get to the blood. Now, this is the interesting thing, that when the, 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 the families and the men would come from miles and miles and miles around, sometimes this would take two or three months journey just to come to the tabernacle. And the fact of the matter is, we can't even drive 30 minutes to come to the house of God, but that's a whole other subject. But they went, and they would bring their lamb, and they would offer it up unto God as a sacrifice for their sins to make an atonement for them. Because God, when he saw the blood, he no longer saw them. He saw the sacrificial lamb. And now he can be able to accept their sin offering because of the blood of the unspot of the unblemished lamb. Does that make sense? And so what happened was, is that when men would come and they would come and men and, and they would come from, from miles around and they would go into the priest and they had to offer up their sacrifice unto the priest and the priest was the only one that was able to go behind the veil to be in the presence of God where he took the Lamb of God and he prayed over the Lamb of God. He confessed the, 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 his, the sin of the people over the Lamb and he became a scapegoat, which means that was a transfer that took place behind the veil. All right, so do you understand that in the Old Testament? Let me skip that right quick. Now, go with me very quickly uh, to the New Testament. Go with me to, um, let's go to Matthew chapter number 27. Matthew chapter number 27. So we understand that we as the people of God, it doesn't matter how good we've been. It doesn't matter how good we've lived. Because the fact of the matter is we're still a mutt in God's eye. Until we receive this new bloodline that God had given us through his son Jesus. Until we accept it into our heart. Then and then only can we become the sons and the daughters of God and be reconciled with God once again. Matthew chapter number 27. You have to understand that once a year the people had to bring this offering unto the Lord. And it would only last for a year, which means every year they had to make this trip. Every year they had to come and they had to offer unto God. It was their sacrificial lamb. Now, Jesus Christ is called the lamb of God. 
He is the one that came to take away our sins forever. Right? And so when we look at uh, Matthew chapter number 27, it says in verse number 46, it says about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama shabbatani, which is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now you have to understand the importance of this event. When Jesus was on the cross and he was crying out to God, he was taking on my sin and your sin. He was the final sacrifice. So every sin that man has ever done is enough for him to just take on my sin. Hallelujah. But he took on everybody's sin. Of the whole world was put up on him. And the anger and the wrath of God that he had towards the children of disobedience was now put up on Christ. And that's the reason why he cried out with a loud voice, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus was not asking a question at this time, but Jesus had a deep anguish because he felt the wrath of God. He had to take on the wrath that God had towards mankind for every lie we've told, for every thought we've thought that was not according to the guidelines of God, for every deed we've done, everything we could ever think or imagine was covered when Jesus took on our sins. That's the reason why he covered us from past, present, and future sins. We are forever covered. Why? Because he was the final sacrificial lamb of God. He was the one that took on our sins forevermore. And that's the reason why he tells us in, when we take communion, he says, you need to remember that my body was broken for you. He says, you need to remember, go with me to Isaiah chapter number 53. He says, you need to remember that my body, you need to remember that I am the lamb of God. Because sometimes you can go through and you can get so... Um, familiar with God or so familiar with the church or, or, or you think you got it all together and, and, and you begin to do things without remembering the price that God has for you. We can have so many programs and so many things that we can get so busy in the church to where we forget the real reason why we serve him and begin to understand the real reason why God I am so grateful for what you've done in my life because if it had not been for you where would I be? If it had not been for the simple act of you dying on the cross for me, I know we want everything else. I know we want the houses. I know we want the cars. I know we want the Gucci's. I know we want all these other things. But for me, if God, you do nothing else for me, you have done more than enough. Amen. If, if, if you don't do another thing for me because you have cleansed me so I can spend eternity with my God. I can spend eternity with the Father who created me. Because without him, I was eternally separated. I was eternally separated. I was on my way to hell where there would be gnashing and weeping of their teeth. I was on my way to hell to where I was totally surrendered unto the hands of the devil. And it wasn't because of anything I'd done. It was because just the state. It, it just, I was a mutt. It was just the state that I was in. Amen. But God loved me so much that he gave his only begotten son for me. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. That I can have everlasting life. Hallelujah. That I can spend eternity with God. And I thank him for that. Hallelujah. I thank him for that. When we think about the blood and the new covenant and the new testament. God made it very easy for us. Romans chapter number uh, uh, 10 verse number 9 and 10 says. Uh, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is what is made unto salvation. So he made it easy for us by giving up his body so that his body can be broken for us so that we can get to the blood because it's all about the blood. Isaiah 53 verse number 5 says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was abused for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we were healed. And all we were like sheep have gone astray. We have turned to everyone his own way. And the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. 
The Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of all of us. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to slaughter. And as sheep before his ears is dumb. And he opened not his mouth. He had to go to the cross. He had to get to the point to where, you know, many people say, well, why did he have to have the nails put in his hands? Why did he have to have the spear in his side? Because it had to get to the blood. Because once it got to the blood, we had access unto God once again. Go with me to Matthew chapter number 27. We have access.